resuming debate. Secretary to the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. Well, thank you, Madam Chair, and I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Algonquin people, and I would also like to commend the Minister uh, for his hard work and his dedication to the portfolio, which has seen his shepherding of legislation dealing with criminal justice reforms, important justice reforms, which will enhance access to justice, uh, his and his team's work on uh, ensuring that we have a very capable and high-caliber bench through the work of the ongoing work of judicial appointments. And finally, on the all-important and historic work uh, with reconciliation as it relates to our Indigenous peoples. And I'm honoured to be here to contribute to this dis debate, to speak to some of the concrete steps that we have taken towards recognizing and realizing this government's vision of reconciliation with Indigenous peoples across Canada. Our government has taken the time to meet with many Indigenous leaders across this country. We heard about their priorities, their vision for the future, and the challenges and obstacles they still face in achieving this vision. Hearing these perspectives has served to reinforce our government's commitment to renewing its relationship with Indigenous peoples. We've continued with our efforts to addressing the ongoing negative and adverse impacts of colonialism, discrimination, and marginalization that have for far too long been part of this country's social fabric. Contributing to renewed Crown Indigenous relationships based on rights, respect, cooperation, and partnership remains a priority for the Government of Canada. This is especially true in relation to Canada's justice system. Over the past few years, the Department of Justice and the Government of Canada have introduced transformative laws and initiatives to help achieve reconciliation. One such initiative that we are very proud of is the release of the principles respecting the Government of Canada's relationship with Indigenous peoples. This document will ensure that the rights and needs of Indigenous peoples are considered whenever new policy, initiatives or laws are being introduced or considered. Another key document that the Department of Justice has released is the Attorney General's Directive on Civil Litigation involving Indigenous peoples. This document will help guide litigation positions being developed. The Department of Justice also continues to work with other government departments to find alternatives to litigation with Indigenous peoples wherever and whenever possible and appropriate. These are both foundational documents that establish a modern legal framework and clearly identify the core values informing the Department's day-to-day -day work. As the introduction to the principles note, they are, quote, rooted in Section 35, guided by the UN Declaration, and informed by the report of the Royal Commission on Aboriginal Peoples and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. In addition, they reflect a commitment to good faith, the rule of law, democracy, equality, non-discrimination, and respect for human rights. Training which focuses on the history and context that underlies the principles has been provided to approximately 25% of the Department of Justice's employees. It also covers practical ways in which these important documents can inform all of the legal and policy work the Department of Justice oversees. As far as the directive is concerned, it attests to this government's uh, willingness uh, to uh, improve relations between the Crown and Indigenous persons and to adhere to the Constitution. This directive will focus uh, policies and decisions taken by the Government of Canada in civil litigation uh, cases uh, in accordance with treaty rights and the Crown's obligations towards Indigenous persons. Its efforts to advance the implementation of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action including the call upon governments to fully adopt and implement the United Nations Declaration of Indigenous Peoples as the framework for reconciliation. Canada has already stated its unqualified support for the UN Declaration. Recently, the House of Commons, in this session, restated its support for passage of Bill C-262, an act to ensure that the laws of Canada are in harmony with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Were it adopted, Bill C-262 would, uh, in fact, uh, guide us towards implementation of UNDRIP. It would help us to consolidate 
the work that's already been done to review and overhaul Canadian laws such that they are in harmony with UNDRIP uh, principles and guidelines. We would co-develop an action plan, co-manage an action plan with our Indigenous partners, and there would be annual reports made on our progress. A number of additional and more specific measures that will contribute to rec reconciliation over the long term. A key priority for the Department is Bill C-75, which is now in the other place. This bill proposes various measures meant to help to address court delays. It will also play a role in one of the most serious issues facing our criminal justice system, the overrepresentation of Indigenous peoples in the justice system itself, and in particular, Madam Chair, in our jails. Bill C-75 tackles bail reform and also addresses administration of justice offences such as breaching bail. These offences can unfortunately function as an entry point into the criminal justice system and significantly contribute to the overrepresentation of Indigenous peoples in the criminal justice system. The Department of Justice also continues to support and expand the use of restorative justice, which we know was a priority for many of our Indigenous partners. It is also committed to supporting innovative approaches to the administration of justice in Canada. This means focusing not just on renewing the government's relationship with Indigenous peoples, but building a partnership where Indigenous perspectives, laws, and legal traditions find voice in Indigenous justice system in harmonization with the justice system regimes and processes across Canada. For this reason, Madam Chair, our government has encouraged Indigenous communities to share their views and perspectives on Indigenous laws and legal traditions. We are actively working to promote more dialogue with Indigenous peoples that will guide our collective efforts to recognize and implement Indigenous justice systems in Canada, Madam Speaker. And not only does this work occur in the Department of Justice, but across many ministries so as to give effect to reconciliation. The, Ministre de la the Minister of Justice uh, in Canada is uh, today and tomorrow holding a symposium on Indigenous justice systems. This is a golden opportunity to discuss with our Indigenous partners, academics, law students in Aboriginal law, and officials and public servants from across Canada to revitalise Indigenous laws and to take stock of, in fact, domestic and foreign examples. The importance of revitalising Indigenous legal systems. We know that Indigenous law institutes in partnership with Indigenous communities can play crucial roles in understanding, developing and implementing Indigenous laws. We are working hard to transform and modernise our laws and programmes, but we also have a process uh, that is transparent for the nomination of judges, which uh, holds us to account. Shape the bench to better reflect Canada as it is today and to make the courts more accessible. And Madam Speaker, Madam Chair, I beg your pardon, this is important work which I mentioned at the outset of my remarks. In conclusion, and ultimately the goal of all of the measures and initiative I have just mentioned, is to transform both how the Department of Justice engages with Indigenous peoples and how Indigenous people experience the justice system. We believe that the efforts made by this government to improve its relationship with Indigenous peoples has led to some very significant progress and improvements to the lives of Indigenous peoples over the last few years. However, much more work remains to be done. Working in tandem with Indigenous communities, we believe that we can continue to ensure the implementation of the necessary work and shifts in mindset required to advance our shared goal of achieving true reconciliation. Our government is committed to promoting, protecting and implementing the rights of Indigenous peoples we hope that the efforts and accomplishments of the Department of Justice will continue to reflect our government's shared commitment to achieving reconciliation and earnestly carrying out the work required to accomplish such an important goal. And with that being said, not only do I uh, continue to encourage the government to continue this work, but I certainly encourage my colleagues across the aisle to support this transformative and historical work when it comes to reconciliation. And with that being said, I have a number of questions for the Minister, beginning with what are some of the ways that the government is working to reducing the over-incarceration of our Indigenous peoples in the criminal justice system? Well, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and Attorney General. So I thank the member from Eglinton Lawrence for his contribution this evening and for his work as Parliamentary Secretary. 
the work that is being done starts with Bill C-75, which was mentioned in the comments by the member from Eglinton Lawrence. And Bill C-75 adopts, uh, adopts a number of principles, including a principle of restraint, conditions imposed by the police that must, that must be reasonable in the circumstances and necessary to assure the accused attendance in court, and also ensuring that the entire circumstances of the accused are considered before conditions or sentences are meted out under that legislation. This will help address the overrepresentation of the accused, particularly Indigenous cues in our system. Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. And I would uh, like to thank uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary both for his response to my question as well as his ongoing work, which includes advocacy on Bill C-75. And I would like to ask him a follow-up question, which is how do we ensure that Indigenous peoples are better reflected in our judiciary and in particular on our juries? And I know that this is work that, again, the Parliamentary Secretary has given testimony to. Maybe we should pick Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister of Justice. This Attorney is an General. extremely important question. So what we've done is we've revamped the entire ap appointments process to look at both uh, the, qu the qualities and the merit of the appointments, but also the diversity of the applicants. And by asking people to, to self-identify, what we've been able to ascertain is that 3% of the appointments we've made thus far are indeed members of Indigenous communities, which helps the bench better reflect the people that it serves. Secondly, on the issue of juries, the member knows quite well in terms of his experience as a Crown Prosecutor that jury selection is critical, and what we've done is end peremptory challenges so that we can get back to having more representative juries in criminal cases involving Indigenous accused. I want to remind uh, that the, the questions, the time for the questions being ans uh, asked and the time for the questions being answered is, has to be around the same amount of time. Uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank my colleagues from across the aisle for showing such great interest in uh, the work that we are doing. It would be nice to see some additional support on the work of reconciliation when it comes to uh, the advancement of, of the legislative initiatives which I have referred to. I wonder if the Parliamentary Secretary might shed some light uh, for the purposes of the debate uh, on the floor right now about the importance and the significance and indeed the historical value of the litigation directive which has been recently introduced as it relates to litigation with regards to our Indigenous peoples. Our Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Well, that directive actually in informs the entire basis of our approach towards reconciliation because what it does is it guides the Government of Canada's legal approaches, its position and decisions taken in Indigenous litigation involving Aboriginal and treaty rights protected under 35 of the Constitution. It creates a new m method of approaching litigation and it is an important directive which actually enshrines the new approach we are trying to take, which is in working together with Indigenous persons to address recon reconciliation, including through litigation. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. Thank you, Madam Chair. And in the course of my remarks, I also made mention of Bill C-75, which is an important piece of legislation which will help to reduce court delays by modifying uh, several aspects of the uh, court processes and the trial processes. I wonder if the Parliamentary Secretary might highlight some of the ways in which we are going to significantly reduce delay through the enshrinement of Bill C-75. The, uh, well, the, uh, the Honourable Member has to wait till I recognize him. The Honourable <laughs> Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General. In my enthusiasm to answer that response, I apologize, Madam Chair. The important aspect of C-75 is that it will address delays by not clogging up the system, by, by creating the administration of justice offences that the member for Anglican Lawrence mentioned, by inc invoking a principle of restraint. What these will do is ensure that we don't over-represent Indigenous people in the criminal justice system and thereby cause increasing delays by clogging it further. Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. <clears throat> And just expanding on that, I wonder if the Parliamentary Secretary might expand further on how addressing both administration of justice offences but also the principle of restraint, which is so important when it comes to that first stage of the criminal justice uh, process system when accused and offenders are making their first appearances before the court, how that principle of restraint can actually start to help to address the overrepresentation of our Indigenous peoples in the criminal justice system, which for far too long has been left unaddressed. Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice and Attorney General. This is a very important point because we know that racialized pre people, particularly Indigenous people in this country, are in fact overrepresented in our justice system, including over-incarcerated. And what the principle of restraint talks about is that where there are no concerns about the accused coming to court or posing a risk to public <laughs> safety, police officers and justices are, are, are motivated to release the detained accused at the earliest reasonable opportunity. By entrenching that in law, it provides strong parameters to guide the exercise of discretion by the judge in a given bail matter. 
Our parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities has 39 minutes. Uh, 39, 39 seconds. minutes? Well, that's an extra bonus. I didn't realize I was that effective. That's no, because you have good questions. I, I take the Madam Chair to mean that I have 39 seconds, less than now. 29 seconds. In those remaining seconds, what I would ask the parliamentary secretary is to talk about how we have restored the important and uh, essential resources to the criminal justice system to ensure that we've got access to justice and are affecting meaningful reconciliation for Indigenous peoples. Thank you. Answer from the parliamentary secretary. To the you have to complement sound policy with sound resources. What we're doing is both because we are addressing this concern from a macro perspective, providing the resources necessary to address the important delays that have been highlighted in the speech by my colleague. Thank you. Please, the debate. The honourable.